good everybody welcome to an epic my damn toys video today ladies and gentlemen we have another fantasy booking video for you guys and i know we really don't have a lot of time right because tonight already it is hell in a cell 2020 tonight is the show i'm looking forward to it we only have five matches still announced i haven't seen anything on social media i haven't seen any kickoff matches announced i'm sure again they are going to come they're going to wait till about 20 minutes before the damn show and they're going to be like oh yeah kevin owens is fighting alistair black and the street profits are farting in a bag and smelling it and the new day are eating a bag of pancakes for a championship opportunity at Wrestlemania and just make up all this ish along the way. But anyways, we're going to dive into the fantasy booking video. I usually do these fantasy booking videos before the pay-per-views, but I really didn't have time this week. Had a lot of ish going on and stuff, so I'm going to dive into it here today, and I guess if you guys wanted to check it out, you will check it out beforehand. We only have five matches, so it's not like I'll be sitting here forever, and I figured I could get this up before Hell in a Cell tonight, and we are going to be reviewing the show, so stay tuned for the review. Turn on your bell notifications so that you guys can check out the review once it is posted and we can see all of our thoughts and opinions on Hell in a Cell. But let's start off with the first matchup. Now this is a matchup that I don't think you really need much fantasy booking on but if I were, the, the whole point of these videos guys is if I were the head of creative like it, it just happened tonight Vince McMahon just said MDT you're in charge. Trey you're in charge of this show and whatever you say goes and this is how we're going to do it. That is what this video is. I'm stepping in and I'm fantasy booking myself for Hell in a Cell right here. So starting off guys we do have Jeff Hardy taking on Elias. This is probably the most simple matchup on the card. The only matchup that doesn't really have anything on the line or anything going for it. Just a regular singles match. Jeff Hardy and Elias stemming back from their you know, who hit Elias storyline or whatever the hell with Sheamus and the drunk driving and all the ish. So in this storyline Elias has been super cold, right? I mean, I, I remember when he was red hot. I remember when he would just get the best reactions ever, but he kept doing the same shtick over and over and over. He never progressed. He never evolved. He never changed it up. Not a slight bit. So I think what I'm going to have is I'm going to have Jeff Hardy defeat Elias. I think I have Jeff Hardy going over Elias here, and yeah, I, I just, I, it's hard because I'm super, I'm a super fan of Jeff Hardy. I love Jeff Hardy, and it would be hard for me to say, you know, he loses here. Both guys need the victory very badly, so it, it, it does pain me to say, but I'm going to go with Jeff Hardy for the win there, and that's just the way I'm booking it, man. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. If, if Vince McMahon can get away with, well, it's my show, I book whatever I want, well, yeah, I do too then. How about that? So that would be my first booking decision right there. Nothing too over the top, nothing to insanity or anything, but let's move on to our next matchup, guys, which would be The Miz taking on Otis for his Money in the Bank briefcase, right? So, the Money in the Bank briefcase is on the line. We have Miz taking on Otis. Now, back at Money in the Bank, I did not like Otis winning the Money in the Bank briefcase anyways, so you guys can probably already see where this thing is going. I do not like Otis as Mr. Money in the Bank. Not that he's not a good wrestler, not that he's not a good talent, not that he's not entertaining at times. I just don't see him in that capacity. I thought he fit perfectly into the tag team realm, perfectly into the comedic wrestling, and I didn't want the Money in the Bank lumped into that. So I am going to take the Money in the Bank and take it off Otis right here. I say that Otis loses. I don't care what happens. I, I, I really do not give a damn. But one thing you could do if I was fantasy booking it, I'd have Tucker come down and act like he's going to help Otis and then double cross Otis. There's your feud. You know, Otis won't have to worry about the Money in the Bank briefcase anymore because Tucker will take out Otis and they will feud moving forward. So Otis is heartbroken. He gets taken out by Tucker, recently turned heel, and now the Money in the Bank briefcase is in the hands of Mike Mazan in here, and he's going to go host some wipeout shows with the with the Money in the Bank briefcase. So Mr. Money in the Bank, Miz right here. So Miz will be our Mr. Money in the Bank moving forward. I think this makes the most sense. I mentioned in my, what was it, my predictions video that the Miz has been super cold. He's been ice cold ever since his feud with Shane McMahon. You guys remember his dad got in the ring and he put his fists up like the fighting Irish logo go of Notre Dame, and he freaking got memed to death on the internet, and The Miz has not been the same since then, man. He hasn't done anything worth of note. He's been really bland as a baby face. It just did not work. He is a natural born heel. He needs to be a heel character, so I'm going to have him. Big time heel character with the money in the bank, just super prick-like. You're like, God, I hate this guy, but Jesus Christ, he's so good. Kind of like MJF of AEW. You're just like, God in heaven. Now, I will say I like MJF much better than The Miz, but you know, that's a whole other video for an old other football game. When we get more AEW figures in here, I'll do a fantasy booking Survivor Series style matchup with the AEW figures versus WWE. I think that'd be fire. And MJF versus The Miz would be a pretty cool match. Even though I'd have MJF winning. I think MJF is a much more edgier version of The Miz. Let's shut the hell up. The Miz is Mr. Money in the Bank now. That's what we booked there. So moving into our Hell in a Cell matches, guys, I mean, you really don't need a whole lot coming in here because Bailey and Sasha Banks are taking it on in our first Hell in a Cell matchup. And I think that uh, I would just have Sasha Banks go over here. If you wanted to extend the feud, you could. 
but one thing that I don't like is that the, the first matchup these two are really having in the three years dispute has been boiling over. It may even be, it, I mean, if you want to go long term, long term, this, this match has been booking itself for a very long time now. I know we've had a lot of detours, we've had a lot of crap in this feud, we've had some dumb decisions made and things of that nature, but I would just, uh, just freaking finish it, man. If we're going to finish it, we're going to finish it, and I would have Sasha Banks win the SmackDown Women's Championship. bailey has been champion forever, it seems like. I feel like she's been champion for a year, close to a year for sure. I mean, she has been champion forever, and I've said it every single predictions video, every single review, I've said, you know, Bayley re really needs to win here because she needs to be holding on that championship. She needs to make it prestige. She needs to do this and this and this and that. And here she is sitting on a year, and I remember talking about how Bayley was just underneath the carpet, man. She was underneath the bus getting ran over. <laughs> And now here she is in this big time moment with this long title reign. So I would have Sasha Banks win the championship, capture it from Bayley, and that is the way I would book that. So that is what I do for the first Hell in a Cell matchup. Bayley would lose the championships to Sasha Banks. Now moving forward, guys, I'm not going to even get into another matchup right now because I want to talk about Kevin Owens being left off of the wrestling card. I feel like this man, ever since he has been written off TV with injury, I don't remember what the injury was. It was like, maybe it was just after WrestleMania, after he beat Seth Rollins. He had all that momentum. He had the great WrestleMania moment. He just sort of fell off. And then he came back, and he hasn't really done a John Brown thing. If my memory serves me correctly, I can't even remember, man. It's just been so much hectic stuff going on, especially 2020. But I feel like Kevin Owens is not being utilized at the, at the proper height. You know, I know he's been feuding with Aleister Black, but it really hasn't done anything. You know, it's just been black. And I feel like he needs to be competing for championships, man. He needs to be in the mid card. He needs to be in the upper card. I don't care. He needs to be in some gold. He needs to be revolved around important storylines, and he needs to be in the championship light, so I just wanted to mention that. If I'm if I'm fantasy booking this show, I'm putting Kevin Owens on the damn card, giving him something meaningful to do, and honestly, I'd have him attack The Miz and capture the Money in the Bank contract, but you know what? Since The Miz is there, I'm not going to replace him or anything. I would just have Kevin Owens maybe attack The Miz. How about that? Have him attack The Miz and have that as the uh, coming forward, because he's a babyface right now. I mean, you could that would, that would make them both. Having a babyface attack a heel, but then again, Kevin Owens is kind of a tweener, so I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to say, but Kevin Owens will be on the show in some capacity. He's wrestling somebody, I can tell you that. Better be glad I don't book him to bail off the cell. How about that? But moving forward, guys, we're on our last two matchups here, and one thing I want to say is since The Miz is Mr. Money in the Bank, can he not Can he not cash in on either competitor that he wants, or is it just specifically Raw or SmackDown? I know that he is a part of the Raw brand, so can he only cash in on the WWE Champion, or can he go over to the Universal Champion? I don't know. But booking the last two matchups, guys, let's go ahead and get over here and I guess we can go ahead and start off with Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton. And this matchup isn't necessarily about the matchup. I, I think that for this matchup, I would have them beat the absolute hell of each other. Kind of th think of it, think to yourself more Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton vibes. That's the kind of matchup. This would be very brutal, very hard hitting, very, uh, you know, creative, you know, the crazy toolbox and everything like that. I feel like the last few years, every Hill in a Cell match has involved a toolbox in some way. You had Randy Orton and Jeff Hardy, then you had Seth and The Fiend. And uh, dude, let's just hope this, this matchup and these Hill in a Cell matches are much better than that garbage that we got last year that completely ruined the Fiend character for me. But here in this matchup, it's not really about the match. It's about after the match. So, have whoever you want to win. I don't really care who you want to win. If you want to pr protect Drew, then have Drew defeat Randy Orton in a hellacious Hell in a Cell matchup. After the match, but up ba doo here comes I Came to Play. I Came to Play. Here comes The Miz. Cashes in the Money in the Bank contract. He is going to defeat whoever it is. Doesn't matter if it's, if it's Drew McIntyre, if it's Randy Orton. Doesn't really matter. He's going to walk out as your WWE champion. So The Miz will become champion. He'll cash in the contract. Very quick turn of events, right? I mean, it, it was like he was nothing, and then here he is at the top of the Raw brand. And I highly doubt, you know, this is going to happen. I don't think this is going to happen. But I am fantasy booking this show, so I'd liven things up a little bit right here. I'd have The Miz win the WWE championship, and then, bam, you could have Jeff Hardy feud with him in the Royal Rumble. You could have, I mean, th this opens up plenty of options for The Miz running into the Royal Rumble and whoever we want. We definitely got to have this man drop the championship before. You know, maybe he can drop it at the Royal Rumble if you want, but he's definitely not going to Mania with this. We don't want the Miz as champion going into Mania, so we have a little bit of time. You know, have some fun with the championship. Have some cool feuds, stuff like that. Have a championship match with, Roy with Jeff Hardy at the Royal Rumble. You can do a lot of things here. So, the Miz would capture the WWE Championship. And then the final matchup, we have the Universal Championship Hell in a Cell match. I, I want to say the stipulation changed. I don't know if it's still an I Quit match. Okay, 
Okay, so it is still a I Quit match. However, if Jay loses, Jimmy and Jay will take orders from Roman Reigns and have to acknowledge him as Tribal Chief. So this is how we're going to get the bloodline, I guess, man. This is kind of crazy that MDT Live is coming to fruition on national television right now. But here we go. So you're going to have your I Quit match, and I'm going to take a I'm going to take a page out of JSMW Wrestling's book. He commented on our video the other day, and I shouted him out in yesterday's video in the predictions video because I thought this was a fantastic fantasy booking idea. So Roman Reigns will beat up Jay just like we got in the first match. Very powerful, very emotional stuff. And Jimmy will come down and he'll be like, you know, stop this, whatever. And Roman Reigns will end up beating down Jay. He'll handcuff him to the to the turnbuckle or he'll 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 somehow incapacitate Jay Uso. Then he'll take Jimmy and beat him to a bloody pulp. He will beat Jimmy to death and he will be right on the edge of death. And then Jay Uso will say, I quit because his brother is getting his face hole pounded in. And that is how you will book that. I think that's beautiful. I think that's great storytelling. It falls perfectly right in with the writing that we've gotten so far, with the few that we've gotten so far. And we're going to have the bloodline, man. We're literally going to have Paul Heyman, Roman Reigns, Jay, and Jimmy as the bloodline, just like we see on, on MDT Live, except for Paul Heyman, of course. But that is beautiful fantasy booking right there. I wanted to give a huge shout out to JSMW Wrestling for that idea, because I think that's great. I think that is perfect. You know, I can already picture it. I can literally see it taking place in my skull. Jimmy will get beat to death. Jay will quit, and uh, Roman will, will retain the Blue Universal title, and that's how it should go. I think that's a beautiful. I don't think you could book it any better, and yeah, I think I'd have to write JSMW a check for uh, stealing that idea, but I like it. I like that idea a lot, so I wanted to fantasy book it that way, but I think that is going to do it for my fantasy booking of Hell in a Cell 2020. I would love to know what your thoughts are down below, guys. What do you think of my fantasy booking ideas? Do you agree with them? Do you agree with them? Would you change some stuff? I would love to know down in the comment section below. Now, before we get out of here, I do want to give a huge shout out to somebody from yesterday's video. So leave me a comment and leave me a like for a potential shout out in a future video. I want to give a huge shout out to Mark Madison for this comment in yesterday's video. He said, I think the Miz and Randy Orton will win their matches and perhaps we'll have a repeat in history with the Miz cashing in on Randy. And that has 13 likes and I agree. I think that is exactly what we're saying here. Things come full circle. It works out perfectly, doesn't it? I think it writes itself. I think it's a perfect fantasy booking idea, but a huge shout out to Mark Madison for that comment. I really appreciate it, bro. Another thing I wanted to mention is in the Jey Uso and, and Roman Reigns match, it says that if Jey loses, they'll have to take orders from them, but their family will be exiled from the Anoli family. So I don't know what the hell that means. So they'll have to take orders from him, but they're no longer in the family. I don't know. That's just what Google says over here. It says if Jey Uso loses, he and his brother Jimmy Uso will have to take orders and acknowledge Roman Reigns as the tribal chief of the Usos. Oh, or the Usos and their immediate families will be exiled. So they either have to take orders and acknowledge him as chief, or they'll be exiled from it if he says I quit. Okay, so it's a it's a choice that he gets following following the I quit match. Okay, so that makes sense. Okay, I got it. So it'll be either or there. But nonetheless, guys, I'm getting the hell out of here. I appreciate you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy the fantasy booking ideas. Let me know yours down in the comment section below. I would really appreciate it. Well, anyways, guys, I'm getting out of here. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.